Hi guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Before we get into today's video, today's video is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is trusted by more than 7 million men worldwide for providing premium tools and formulations designed specifically for below the waist grooming and hygiene. Girl, Valentine's Day is coming up, okay? We want our men to be clean, to be on top of their hygiene this year, smelling good, looking good all the things. If you've heard about Manscaped before, you're probably familiar with their Lawnmower 4.0. It's a cordless, waterproof body trimmer. As the leader in men's grooming, Manscaped is now going beyond the groin. So I'm introducing to you the Manscaped Ultra Premium Collection. So man maintenance is a whole lot easier with Manscaped. The Ultra Premium Collection is designed to help you save time while also leveling up your grooming game. You want to opt for a better routine, so something that supports the natural health of your skin and your hair and has the same masculine cologne. We want our men to smell good this year, okay? We have the Plow 2.0. It's a single blade, double-edged face safety razor. I'm not gonna use this, but I definitely know he will and that looks like great quality. I also have this body spray. Oh, that smells really nice. Oh, cute! There's lip balm. We have a two-in-one. Coming out with the two-in-ones, but the bougie ones. We have a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. I, I feel like guys with like short hair don't need to do the whole thing like how us girls do. Also, it looks really nice and bougie, so if you live with your boyfriend, have this. I'm gonna have Manscaped everywhere when I move out with my boyfriend because it just like looks aesthetically good. Okay, so we have deodorant here. It actually smells really good. And we have a daily shower gel as well. Be sure to opt for the Manscaped Peak Hygiene Plan. You can pick a replenishment cycle that works best for you and basically get all of your favorite products delivered to you. Go to manscaped.com and use the promo code here for 20% off. Everything will be linked in my description with all of the information. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much to Manscaped and let's get into today's video. I literally love iced tea. Let's just discuss something. Let's take a deep breath together, okay? You and me. Yes, I know it's kind of cringe. You're like, bitch, I don't want to take a deep breath with you. Let's take a deep breath together, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. That actually felt so good. If you didn't do it, then do it this time. Ready? One more time. We're gonna breathe in, hold it, and release. Okay, we are in 2023. The world is crazy. We shouldn't have access to so much at our fingertips. I think it can be really toxic for us. We get addicted to our phones, to TikTok. I definitely struggle with this. Like my screen time has gone up and I need to work on that. None of us are 100% happy all of the time. So there's so many like YouTube channels where it's like how to reinvent yourself and I'm exhausted even thinking about it, being honest with you. And the approach I always want to have with my channel is like, Bitch, life is gonna get hard, okay? Life is fucking hard. There is not a single month in the year where I don't cry my eyes out and I don't have that moment of like, what am I doing with my life? I truly don't think there is a single month that I've had in the past three years where I haven't had that moment. Let's just like throw that out of the window. The whole like, how to reinvent yourself. Yes, there are things you can do that will absolutely change your life, you know? Um, working out and meditating and all the things people say and we're gonna get into what changes my life personally but you can't just wake up and like flip a switch and just be happy all the time you can practice things that will help you get out of that rut you can practice things that will help you stop panicking you know panic attacks and anxiety and all of that it's like i know that this might trigger some people and i know that there's like a balance and certain people struggle with it worse than others but at the end of the day we all get anxious you watching this and me, we get anxious. Yeah, nice, let's, let's do that while I'm recording. <laughs> you and me, we get anxious. And if I could sit with you watching this video and if we could just have a one-on-one -on -one chat for a few hours, you would soon realize we are both the same and we both have problems and nobody is perfect. So let me just remind you, I also feel it. I feel that pressure, I feel like Life is fucking hard. But as I said, there are certain things that you can do to help keep that balance. You should never be like 100% overly like happy, ecstatic, or really, really sad. There's like a balance. You should kind of be in the middle and that's what I try and practice. Because life can feel so extremely good sometimes and you have those moments, those like euphoric moments almost. You know what I mean? Like you're just so peak happy. I struggled for a bit because I thought that is what it meant to be happy. 
And if I wasn't feeling that, then everything else has gone to shit and I would just like always be craving that kind of happiness. I don't think we should always live in that really happy vortex of energy all the time. I'm not saying you should be sad. No, but there's like a middle ground where you are just every single day super, super grateful. You know what I mean? You should never spend 24 hours feeling so down about things. There are always so many things to be grateful about. There are always ways to pull you out of a really bad day. So these are practices that really, really help me eliminate those bad feelings. Because like I said, we shouldn't be overly happy. We shouldn't be overly sad. We should learn to be balanced. And to be balanced is so much easier said than done. Because there are so many TikToks and YouTube videos about how to be happy, how to be confident, how to this, how to that. It is easier said than done. I'm gonna talk about the things that I do that really change my life and keep me from going insane. There's this Kanye West song. I think it's the flashing lights song that's flashing lights like all over TikTok. And there's this lyric that he says and I was like listening to this while I was driving and he's like, Man, the weather's so breezy. Why can't life always be this easy? I was literally driving and I was like, I feel that. You know when like a day is so perfect, you know it's not gonna last. And I know this is kind of like a really depressing way to think about things, but it's like, I have those moments sometimes. I'm like, I wish this would just last. Like this great weather and happy mood and like, you know, but it's all about accepting. I actually have a really good piece of advice that I just thought about just then. The same way, that I have those feelings of like, this is a really good moment, but I know this is not gonna last and things are gonna get bad again. On the flip side, I also practice the feeling of when things are bad, like, okay, this is a really shit moment, but things won't always be this bad. It's gonna get better. It's a balance. It's balance, baby. There's, it's like a scale. There are bad days, there are good days, but I personally think that we as humans are more capable of experiencing those good days depending on our moods, depending on our daily practices, and depending on the way that we live our lives. Before we get into the actual like self-care tips, like I wanna talk about a few things. So this is kind of like the introduction, but I was doing my daily walk. I wrote down a few notes. So I'm just gonna read some. I wrote down, everything is about how you feel. So love calls you through your bad feelings and love will tell you you're disconnected from the positive force of life. And that's why feeling down feels so bad. Like when I'm sad, it feels so bad. It's like devastating. And it's cause we're not supposed to be living life like that. Love is all around. I really feel like the universe loves me. It just wants to give me a big hug. You know, like life is not supposed to be easy, but that doesn't mean that life has to be devastating. I think we just have to have better practices in how we live our lives. That's why feeling sad feels so bad. We're not supposed to feel sad. You know, we can never really stay in that for too long. I love the audiobook, The Power. I was listening to that the other day and I wrote a few notes um, based on things that I was listening to. I wrote down, you need to take your feelings off autopilot. So basically what I mean by this is many people don't know the power of good feelings. So their feelings are a reaction. They are a response of what's happening around them or to them. It's like you're putting your feelings on autopilot instead of deliberately taking charge of them. So when you wake up, you are at the tipping point of your day. You are the one who determines what your day is going to be like. I'm not saying you have to hold crystals and squeeze them and really force yourself to feel good. It's healthy to cry. You should cry. You should feel down. You should let it out when you need to. Sometimes life feels heavy. You know, I get home and I'm tired. Maybe I haven't been eating well, haven't meditated, haven't really journaled. I feel like I need a cleanse. I need to get my spirituality in check and I need to like have a moment to just cry it out I will let myself cry it out like in order to get myself at a better frequency sometimes I need to cry it out right but I really keep my emotions in check I rarely cry for like no reason I'll like let myself like think about things and brew in it and then I'll let myself cry but then I get out of it my feelings are not on autopilot and this is something that I learned and it took me a long time and I'm still learning to like really master this but when something happens it is up to you to change the way you're viewing that right so for example random example the other day this is actually a true story the other day I was speeding, I was in a rush, and I'm pretty sure I got a fine, but I don't know, I haven't received it in the mail yet, but I quickly, instead of feeling so bad about it and letting it ruin my day, just started thinking about other things that I'm really grateful for and that make that seem less bad. I started to think like, okay, I haven't even gotten this fine yet, but if I do get it, it could have been worse. I could have had an accident. I could have this, this, and that. And I'm not saying every time you have something bad happen in your life, throw that away and just be like, it could be worse. Cause my mom used to do that to me when I was young and it used to really annoy me. I would tell her about my problem and she'd be like, people are dying in the world. Okay, I'm not saying you have to do that every time. I'm saying 
What is the point in feeling so bad about something that you cannot control? And so therefore, if you go through something that you know you're gonna be okay, you know you're gonna get over and it's just, it's annoying at the most, but it's not gonna kill you. How you feel about that can depict how you feel over the course of a few hours or maybe even the rest of your day. It's like if I wake up and I stub my toe on something, I don't even realize this, but that could like literally depict how I feel throughout the whole day. There are no bad and good days. There are days where you have certain things happen to you and you react differently and then maybe you carry that on, but you have the capability to have a good day every single day. And that's why self-care is so important. That's the real meaning of self-care. It's not doing a face mask and sitting there and watching a show and then going on and still complaining about your life. It's gratitude, it's meditation, it's listening, it's learning, it's changing your life. I'm not saying it was any easier before because I wasn't here. Girl, I wasn't born. But I'll tell you something, in 2023, having access to all this information about all the crazy shit happening in the world and constantly comparing ourselves to everyone and just, it's exhausting. And there are just certain things that I wanna teach you guys how to do that will help. Although I am super, super spiritual and I have a very spiritual approach to things, um, I also feel like, you know, in a lot of books I've read, there is a scientific explanation to how manifesting and kind of like having this belief system that you can manifest what you want and the universe is a good kind universe that it wants to reward you right so even if you don't believe in something spiritually just scientifically it's proven that certain things like reading meditating and all the things we're about to get into that i do to make myself feel better will make you feel better it is literally proven it's not just a spiritual thing you don't have to be spiritual to do these things but i guess i have just picked up this way of thinking along the way. You know, some of my friends aren't spiritual, I am, and that's okay. But let's eliminate the belief that you have to be spiritual and a hippie to do these things, to meditate. Meditating is literally scientifically proven to change your life and make you feel better. You are gonna die anyway. Think of it as a roller coaster, right? Life is a roller coaster, as people say. Why would you jump off before it's finished if it's gonna finish anyway? You're in it, you're buckled in, the ride is left, you, can get through this and you will. The title of this video is how I keep myself from going insane, right? I really do go crazy. Like if I don't do these things, I spiral. And I've had really bad moments. I've had really, really bad panic attacks. I wasn't keeping my spiritual health in check. I was working a lot, burning myself out, not really eating right, not exercising. Because I work from home, I was inside all the time. Then I started like actually kind of losing my mind and I broke down. I had this massive breakdown where all of my friends were out. It was a weekend and I didn't go out the whole weekend. I was by myself at home and living alone is its own roller coaster, okay? If I don't keep myself like in touch with people or, you know, reminded that I'm loved and that I have a purpose and that tomorrow the sun is gonna come out and this bad feeling is gonna go away, sometimes it gets so bad and I forget all that and it's like, girl, I had a whole panic attack. I was crying. My mental Mental health needed a cleanse. For a little moment, I thought to myself like, if this keeps going on, I could end up in a really, really bad place, in a really bad situation. So what am I gonna do to get myself out of that? Obviously, I got out of that. Um, that's just life, we have those moments sometimes. Step one, always drinking iced tea. No, I'm just kidding. Step one, I work out every day, even if it's a little bit. I wanna read this from Google, okay? I don't wanna just throw out random facts. Regular exercise helps ease depression and anxiety by releasing feel-good endorphins, natural cannabis like brain chemicals, and other brain chemicals that can enhance your sense of well-being. I don't usually film during the day, and like my lighting goes weird if the sun's coming in. Um, so we're just gonna sit here in the darkness with my lights. But anyway, it's scientifically proven that working out releases feel-good chemicals, you know, into your brain. And so I know that that's talked about a lot, but when I was having my little episode, I was thinking like, what could I do to like, change the way I'm feeling so bad right now and I realized I don't work out. I haven't been working out in ages. Lately, I've been doing some sort of workout every single day. I used to never go on walks. Like, what? who goes on walks is how I used to be like. But I go on walks. I listen to music. I will get out of the negative feelings. So for me, it's walking, it's Pilates, it's gym. Gym is probably the last on those three, to be honest. I love my little walks, and I also really love Pilates, so I'll go to Pilates all the time. Like, I go like five times a week at the moment. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely make sure that every single day without failure, I'm doing something physical, and I would say you should do that too. You know how people have those like really aesthetically cute journals? Right, this is my journal. <laughs> She's so cute. I'm so specific about everything, 
and I've had a million journals like all the cute ones those aesthetic little ones but like I'm left-handed and I swear to god I smudge everything when I write so I was like I need the perfect journal I need the perfect size and this is the one that I got from Officeworks and I'm obsessed with it seriously I don't write as much as I want to I should write more I should write like every single day I used to in high school I've got all my journals of like I literally used to write every single day in high school and it's so amazing I look back and I reflect and I've got these really thick journals and it's like it's so amazing to read back and to see what I was going through. Let me tell you something. Your gut is always right. Don't even question it. About friends, about relationships, about anything. Maybe sometimes you choose to ignore your gut because you want to follow your heart and not your brain. But we got a brain in there, girl. You've been living in this body. You've been living in this life. You have experience. And so your brain is always going to tell you things. And when you write things down and when you journal, you're often reflecting on what's happening in your life. So if I have an issue, and I need some clarity and I need to understand better like what should I do from here on out, I'll journal. Journaling is like, it's like talking to someone about your problems but not having their biased opinion and talking to people is amazing and you should always talk to people when you're going through things but I really recommend journaling because it's like a quiet space. You're sitting there with your feelings, your gut feelings, what your brain is telling you, you're writing it all down and then you're reflecting on it. Often I'll write things down and I'll read back and I'm like shit that's how I'm feeling. It's a way to reflect, you know? Journaling is not about like dear diary today kissed a boy. No it's about like let me actually read you some. Let's get really personal here, okay? Let me read you a bit of my journal. This is very private. I love you guys a lot and I trust you guys clearly if I'm out here reading my journal but I'm gonna read you a bit of my journal so that you can understand what I mean by it's a way to reflect and to reassure yourself okay so I'm just gonna read you little bits I wrote down um, this is the 20th of January I'm crying as I write this very dramatic um, I'm having a really bad day and a lonely night it's kind of scaring me that I feel this sad I really like living alone for the most part but I think I'm stressing about moving to Melbourne I'm gonna miss my family I was having a really low night because I'm moving by myself to a new city. I'll always love Sydney, Sydney's my home, but I need change and I need to get out of here for a bit, you know, to grow and to experience new things and meet new people. And so it's been a roller coaster because moving is a big deal. Like being away from my family is a big deal. I'm really happy that it's just a one hour flight, but like it's still away from them. And then I wrote down an update. Update, it's been a few days. My emotions are all over the place. Life is seriously a roller coaster. I'm quickly learning that I can spiral and have panic attacks and get in really bad moods. I think meditating and working out will help. I don't feel great right now, so I might try it out and see how I feel after. Then I made another update and I said, update, I feel incredible. I should start walking more often. So next time I feel really sad and I decide to read this journal. I might forget about this page, come back to it, and see that I was also feeling really sad on this day, but then all the updates of me like walking and trying to, you know, really figure out and pinpoint what is it that's making me so anxious? What are my limiting beliefs telling me that I can't get out of this feeling? When I can reflect, then I understand myself better. Journaling is incredible. Don't sleep on journaling, okay? Number three, meditate. My favorite book ever is this book called Einstein and the Rabbi. The book is basically about like the universe and you know meditating and practices that can really help you in your everyday life. It's an incredible book. Honestly, I recommend it to everybody. I love that book so much. I feel like I can get really agitated a lot. Meditating is pretty self-explanatory. I don't really have to get too deep into it because I feel like people, you know, know that meditating is like a world-renowned thing that's like really good for us to do. But I actually watched this TikTok and I'm going to explain something. We're always like stimulated, right? So I'm always like on TikTok watching stuff or I always like play stuff in the background. Like when I get home, I can't be in silence alone. I don't really like to do things in silence. If I need to do something like doing my makeup or whatever, I never do it in silence because we have all these things at our fingertips. Like I can put on my favorite show, which is The Vampire Diaries right now. Call me cringe, I don't care, it's my favorite show. I'll just like chuck on The Vampire Diaries or I'll play like lo-fi beats in the background. Like I'll ask my bitch lights up she starts talking so I had to whisper that but anyway I'll play some like background music I fall asleep to background music I'll like I always have something going on in the background I'm always stimulated my mind is always on a hundred and so sometimes it's really important to just be still it's so important to bring yourself back to the moment okay think of it as like this is your purpose this is why you're here this is the moment 
and we get so lost and like go so far from it, we always have to come back. And a way that you can bring yourself back to that is by meditating because you're in silence or you know, maybe you're playing like meditation music, but essentially you're sitting there and your whole focus is to breathe, it's breath work and to just simply be. That's it, that's your whole thing by meditating. Sometimes I meditate and I meditate to focus on things and manifest things and kind of like give out good feelings. If I want to change my energy and I want to manifest things and I want to think about the things that I want, then I'll meditate and I'll put on like a, I'll put on something from YouTube that's like um, meditation, manifestation or whatever. But you know, sometimes I really just want to sit still and I need to like have that moment. So I'll take an hour, I'll do a little five, 10 minute meditation. Nobody said you had to meditate for four hours like a monk. You can meditate for five minutes and even that will really change your day. I really try and do 10 minutes because that feels like it changes the day for me. And then a little bit of journaling at night, five minutes of meditating in the morning, 10 minutes of journaling at night. It's so easy. It's like we take care of our health, we take tablets, we go to the gym, we do these things. Why are we forgetting about our mental health? The one true issue in this lifetime, the hardest thing you will have to deal with in your life is your emotions, right? Dealing with your emotions, how can you slow them down? How can you control them? I listen to a lot of podcasts. I love The Secret, I love The Power. Um, I love Jay Shetty's podcast. I really like listening to Russell Brand. I'm just throwing things out there because I get asked all the time like what I listen to. Einstein and the Rabbi, read that book. Okay, um, I can throw out more recommendations to you guys, but there are tons of amazing podcasts and YouTubers, and thank you so much for tapping in, by the way, but there are so many amazing YouTubers and podcasts and people that talk about things that are so important. It's important for me to, you know, indulge in like the fun stuff, like when I watch The Vampire Diaries or like YouTube channels that I love and makeup and all of that, but it's also important to read and learn about things in my universe and things that will help me, things that I can talk to you guys about. And so that's why I really like podcasts and books and stuff. I never have time for books, if I'm being honest. I don't really read because I don't have time, but I'll listen to podcasts all the time. So yeah. And finally, number five, call me cliche, but practice gratitude. Let me just really quickly talk about practicing gratitude before I end this video. It doesn't necessarily like change my mood and put me from like a 40% to 100%, you know? Practicing gratitude makes a difference. Like I was driving the other day and I was just like in such a good mood. Like nothing really put me in that mood, but I think it was because I was super grateful, you know? I was thinking like, oh my God, the sun is out. Everything is good. Like I'm healthy right now. I'm not sick. You know, I just signed this deal and I'm making this money and like, I just feel really good. And the thing that made me feel good, the thing that started this chain of emotions of like really happy feelings was literally me being grateful that the sun was out. So feeling grateful about little things, like in your mind being thankful for little things. Feeling grateful and feeling good will just bring more grateful, good feelings. It's like a snowball. The same way that feeling bad and feeling lack, like I lack this, I don't have this, ignoring all the things that you have, it's also like a snowball effect. You're just gonna continue to feel worse. Why would you do that? You know, like people will like cringe at the whole, be grateful, meditate, blah, blah. Okay, but it's like, who's the real loser? It's the people that aren't keeping their mental health in check. It's the people that aren't thankful, that aren't grateful. They're swimming in this negative energy, like maybe they're waiting a little bit too long at this red light and they let that agitate them. You're the loser if you feel like that, okay? Life is not perfect. You're not gonna have everything you want all the time. Stop thinking that you are owed this perfect life. None of us live a perfect life and neither will you. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope the lighting isn't too weird. It's golden hour. It might have been things that you've heard in the past to do, but I hope that me explaining to you why these things make me feel better and how I do them, I hope that that helps and I hope that you guys try it out and it makes you feel good. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video.